Welcome to Auntie K's, your favorite radical queer indigenous auntie bringing you tarot every day. So I have a new deck and I've just opened it this far and we're going to take a look. This is a deck I found on Etsy at Bill and Jackie Love C. Uh, it's Sarah located in England. Um, this is a deck that is a gift to myself, I hope. So, uh, it was all very nicely environmentally wrapped. Let's take a look at what we have here. Okay. So, this is a deck that is about uh, two years old. This is maybe a sticker. Or, I'm not sure what else it would be. Um... This is Most Magical Thanks from Jackie. Welcome to a Magical World. Illustrated books, card decks, fabrics, prints, original artworks, and much more. Yet, yeah, this is mostly an art site, and um, but there is also four decks. Oh, this looks like a bookmark, perhaps. Uh, the Four Covens. <laughs> so, uh, The Four Covens, which is the name of the deck. I got several art prints. There is four of them, so I imagine they are from each of the four covens. And we have a guidebook and um, a deck. And it's a playing card oracle deck. Oh, uh, yeah. I've been struggling to find a playing card deck. Oh, and I got a coaster. Ooh, a coaster. That's kind of cool. All right. I don't know what side I want to use. Um, this feels like a made box. It's really quite thick and sturdy. These are... So that is a bridge size and this is a playing card size and that's the size they are. It is a linen finish. Um, and uh, so I've not been happy with the uh, playing card decks I got for whatever I wanted them for. Um, and uh, I thought about the ones I did like the most, which would be Curious Cats Club deck and the donut playing card I just showed you. Um, so I found this deck with animal coven witches instead of um brain part people so you know we avoid the issue of it being all white um and it has keywords um in it they do as i looked on the positive side but not in a way like I think they can be used <clears throat> in either, a, you know, 
positive or negative light. Um, so I'm going to use it on this Lenormand mat and in playing card reads and see how it goes. See if it's, um, if these keywords are useful. They go with the numbers, I feel, um, to some extent. Like, I don't know that I would have put creativity at nine, but it's also three by three by three. It's, well, I don't know. Um, I think it's going to work, but I'm going to try it out. And I'm kind of excited about the possibility of it working out. So we, we've got Joker cards, two Joker cards. We have a hex card. Uh, I think that's useful other than we have an extra card. I think that's useful other than I'm not allowed to read these at Purple Ocean, but um, like it could still play an, an interesting role. Right, so it has a guide. It has a guidebook, and um, I will probably read it through once, because <laughs> uh, that's how we are. It uh, feels quite nice. The four covens, in conjunction with grateful thanks. Okay. Uh, ooh, we have a table of contents. Yeah. Introduction by Ursula, birth by Stoltz. Most Trotsky Grand High Priestesses of the League of Lid Curving Witchery. Greetings, or Gresham, as we creature witches say. It's my great pleasure to be able to introduce the card deck you now hold in your hands or paws. Indeed, as both ambassador and high priestess of the League of Lid Curving Witchery, it's always a joy to be able to show a little of our Trotsky, Trotsky world to creatures out in what we call the great beyond. And whilst we know little of your lives, we understand that no matter how differently we may appear to each other, we remain bonded in many similarities and... How am I in focus? Okay. <laughs> and as you'll hopefully soon discover, the Four Covens, which is Oracle, is just one of them. So it is storybook-like, which I find fascinating. Bedknaps, Crooked Hats, Lid Sisters, Earth Weavers. Okay. Um, cauldrons, Brooms, Swans, and Hats. You might know them as spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts. And while Snow Historian is willing to testify that, the Four Covens deck came before all others. This is going to be fun. Um, bidnaps are makers of things. Whatever you require, you'll always be able to find a bidnap who will fashion it for you. This, I think, is definitely going to be fun. Earth Weavers. Most secretive of four covens, earth weathers are also the smallest, both in stature and numbers. They don't underestimate their two true importance, powers or magical powers. Sought for by other creative witches when they need herbal treatments. Interesting. I must have missed some. But. Lid Sisters. Completely insistent. They be recognized as the most important of all four covens. Uh, they make no bones of constantly looking down on others. 
whether from their broom, far up on their broom or with their expensively fashionable shoes on the ground. Trading in small stones called drunts. Bit of boasting about their wealth. Okay, that's what I miss. Largest of the four covens is the crooked hats. They exaggerate. They think they're the oldest. Uh, they might start pointless arguments that they always claim to win. Uh, beneath all their blustering, um, boisterousness, infantile behavior, you'll find, like most of us, what all crooked hats really want is simply to be accepted. They're the largest numbers. Um, they are great company for an unforgettable night out. Loyal friends, never short of a prank. And if you can tolerate their untidiness and complete lack of practical skills, which is that can sometimes bring that most precious of all thing, a smile to your face. Uh, so this is going to be interesting to read through. What did it say about the numbered cards? Coven picture cards are the Jack, uh, familiars, queens, seers, kings, priestess, and coven arms, ace. Solitary witches who attach themselves to no single coven. This is the League of Lid-Curving Witchery. Preferring instead to freely live and practice in their own right and burdened by ties of coven sisterhood. It's in poem forms. This is going to be like a story to read through. And I imagine reading through it um that's totally what i picture myself doing uh reading through this and then using the deck um that's my big plan um and i think i'm pretty excited about that and i will get back to all of you about that and how that goes when i do it All right, so this is a few days after the first part. Um, on my first day with this deck, I figured out how to use it, and I do use it on here. I lay it out in a Lenormand spread, and I use the houses to tell me what, you know, I I am looking at. So I, I'm looking over here, um for, you know, their job and, and their performance at that job and how that's harvesting out, how they're getting on with others, dating life, a bit about the man and the woman, uh, what is ending, what's going on in their love life. Um, so that's how I'm using this. I did read the guidebook and it's cute, um, but it wasn't really helpful for me in understanding the cards. Um, I don't know. Like, the, the main character goes through each of, of the cards' experiences and gets told a challenge or a puzzle or something. And then they kind of disregard everything. 
I, I don't really get it. Um, I struggled with figuring out, uh, cause it does say in the guidebook that each of the suits, um, it does say that each of the suits relate to, uh, one of the suits in a playing card deck. And I was sort of uncertain about it. I, I made a guess and wrote it down. But I still felt uncertain about that. It was the familiars in each suit that uh, confirmed what I was thinking uh, each suit represented. Um, so, then today... Oh, I've already smudged it a bit. Today, I put notes on, on my cards um, that are would be like key words or ideas from playing card associations that worked uh, with the keyword on here. Sometimes it was a stretch and sometimes it wasn't. Uh, rising, gift, success, surprise, job offer. Uh, peace of mind, or wellness, peace of mind, well-earned, health and wealth. Um, and then for um, the familiar seer and priestess, um, I, I assigned them um, the, the titles I assigned to uh, jacks, queens, and kings. Um, the roles and relationships to jack, kings, and queens that... I have for playing cards, and um, I, I'm hoping that's useful because I there was some aspect last night where I was reading, and I was like, "Don't second guess yourself. Go with your gut." Um, I I I felt I wanted a bit more because the guidebook didn't clarify anything for me. So in a reading. What I do is I am laying them out in here. There are two jokers in this deck. I'm using one and there's a hex card and I am also using that, but neither came up. All right. So what makes it faster for me than looking at all the court cards on the table is just grabbing this deck here to find out where my people cards belong. Oh, interesting. Uh, so the seekers in the moon position and I'm, you know, they were right next to the person. So I'm putting them right next to the person. Suppose I could put them on the cross card too, which is also here. <clears throat> um, But I think this works and um, tells me some information uh, about the couple. <laughs> um, so the seeker is a friend of the man and, and the man is um, someone who's, uh, you know, uh, in a relationship in this particular situation. Um, he does have a lot of strong feelings for things are actually going to work out. So we also see that, um, he is, you know, getting divorced. He's, uh, that's going to work out well for him. And uh, I would tell him that their relationship is going to come through this, um, he needs to be making decisions right now and um that create positive change and so that would be getting the divorce um he's juggling responsibilities and dividing property like this all works out like he's this is going on for him right uh right now um and
I would say things had been, um, you know, difficult for them in, in getting this going and he is getting this relationship in order. And if uh, she wants to know how that's going to work out, I, I'm going to say it will work out well. She wants to know if they're going to move in together eventually. I'm going to look at the house. Uh, legal matters begin. Yeah, eventually, but not till after he has uh, finalized uh, his divorce. Because uh, otherwise it would make for some easy, uneasy relations, some difficulties. Uh, there might be some setbacks. Um, and he has to figure out the family situation. Um, but, you know, uh, other than this difficulty, um, you know, we have up here uh, the ring, um, the mom or, and wife, um, and some stalemate and unexpected setbacks. But then it will happen. Uh, so how are things going at work? Okay, so there is difficulties from your coworkers, but just keep pushing forward anyways. Be headstrong. Uh, it, you know, cleanse these problems away because your bosses, you know, see uh, your skill over their, um, their charm. And so that is going to work out for you. Um, and they, they see you in a good light, in a good light in the work area and, uh, the fruits of your labor are going to come in. So these, um, are, are a good situation. Uh, interestingly, you know, what we have in the gentleman lady situation reflects back on this relationship that you know the client is the other woman these are uh friends um in these that are going to become lovers and um that that's talking about you know keep this somewhat friendly things are moving along be patient because we know a good outcome is coming it's not like you're going to scare them off um so yeah, uh, that that's what I would have to say about all of this. So that's how I am currently using it. And I have had fun using it that way. I am looking forward to uh, today's use with the my notes on the cards. And you know, the thing is, um, I have, um, notes on my other card deck that I really like, and it feels a lot like, um, It feels like it belongs to me. There's something about putting the notes on that um, makes, it gives, there's a hex card. It gives us ownership of like, these are my cards. You know, this is how I'm reading them. My notes on it aren't exactly the same as on the donut deck. I, I work somewhat with the, uh, um, keywords going on in here and I am uh, happy with this deck currently now we're, we're still really early in on using it but um, since I finished the guidebook had feelings on it and uh, sat down to uh, solve those uh, feelings on it myself by making this deck a bit more mine, a bit more what I want it to be. Um, I, I thought that was worth sharing and I hope that is useful for folks. Um, 
Also about the keywords, like these keywords overwhelmingly have a um, positive associations. And so expanding on them with my own keywords gives a lot more balance to it. So there we go. So here I am after a week of working with the four uh, covens oracle. Um, and I've really enjoyed this deck. I truly have. Um, I think my one remaining complaint is that hearts are symbolized by a wand. It is taking some work working with that too. Uh, get my mind to see it as a wand. Um, so that's a, a real bit of a struggle. And I'm not really sure what to do about it. But I've enjoyed it. And I've used it a lot this week. Um, I think as playing card descriptions get more solid in my mind. It also becomes easier to read Marseille. Um so that has been uh, good as well. And um, I've really been enjoying this. I did note that the struggle to see the wands as hearts impacted how easy it was for me to see the love in a reading. Um, and I've thought about that pretty seriously about what I can do to fix that. Um, and it might involve me um, making like a small light colored heart in the background of each one, uh, as, as messy as that whole plan is. Um, that is my thought process. I'm just realizing now that some of my notes are written upside down. Um, bit because of the shadow shape in the background um but I have I've thoroughly enjoyed this deck this week it's given me a, a lot of good insights um it shook up <clears throat> some of the readings um you know from reading Lenormand all the time which I love don't get me wrong but it did shake it up a little bit and that is something I really enjoyed. So, if you're a playing card user who uses them for divination, this deck works. It, it works. Um, the guidebook isn't useful, in my opinion. And that might just be how my brain translates information that, like, I wasn't getting it. I don't know, but... I wasn't, um, but I do find the keywords useful, and when thinking about playing card associations, um, they worked. Like I said, I wrote them down for me because the um, the words that come with it are on the lighter side. Um, so we've got um, skill, choices, um, but they really do work and they aren't too much perspective. Um, like those are words that really can go in multiple ways. Um, it's a good deck. I like it. I, I see me using this deck frequently for sure. 